Ah, Mr. John. Right. Welcome back, everybody. Uh, it's the captain here with Digital John. Digital John. Uh, nobody's allowed a normal name in Andertons for some reason, especially not in YouTube land. Um, welcome back. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for coming down. Thank you. Thank you. Now, here's a video that nobody asked for. Um, <laughs> but actually, we just went, people should be asking for this video, yeah. right? Yeah. So over here is the Strymon Iridium. Uh, it's super, super popular. Uh, it's by no means the only option anymore in this kind of amp in a box, but it's still probably the most popular one. And it's basically a very, very simple to use pedal replacement for having a guitar amplifier if all you want to do is DI into a desk. Mm. Um, the Strymon has three guitar amp tones built into it and three cabinet tones that you can kind of mix and match. And then other than that, it's just a very simple set of controls, mm. pretty much like you get on an amplifier. And it's 400 quid or something yeah. like that. So it's not, not cheap, right? And of course, in almost every single multi effects unit now, yeah. you get amp modeling and you can buy really good amp modeling effects units for 400 quid with more stuff with way more yeah. stuff so it's like why does this exist mm. yeah and pete and myself and john were sitting there going i don't know why well, hasn't somebody done a video on this so we Here thought we we'd are. do that so the, the the fact that we've picked the iridium and the mx5 is really irrelevant it's just mm -hmm. a popular unit for 400 quid versus a popular amp in a box of 400 yeah. quid um and I guess we're going to go on and we're going to go on a journey, and we're going to try the in in the Iridium. We're going to try the 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 Fender, the the Vox, and the Marshall settings, and then we're going to find an equivalent amp and cab in the MX5. We're not going to go anywhere near the effects. We might add some reverb, and we're going to go. Is there a reason why you would buy this as its own standalone thing rather than this? Yeah. Um, so I think John's going to do the playing. Tonally speaking, we can all comment on what we think it sounds like. Um, from a user experience, we can all comment as well. But from a feel experience, only you, John, okay. have the same. responsibility. Yes, it is. There we go. Um, so we're starting with the first setting. So the round setting with cabinet A on uh, the Strymon is, he says, just referring to his notes, a Fender Deluxe Reverb through a Fender Deluxe Reverb 1x12. In the uh, MX-5, we have a 64 black deluxe reverb into the matching 1x12 cabinet. The Strymon has this idea of room control. The MX-5 just has traditional reverb. They are not quite the same thing. The Strymon is about trying to emulate the position of an amp within a room. Yeah, ambient mic type thing-ish. Sort of. Yeah. I mean, it's it's not the you know the MX5 is more trying to emulate the reverb that would be in the amplifier, which is mm -hmm. why we've sort of switched them off. But let's start with our our Strymon Iridium. Okay. Let's get some some tones. <laughs> Now the room control here does change the tone of the amplifier more than just adding reverb on the MX-5. So I'm just going to find a little bit because I just think it's so dry without it. So just, mm. just play a little. Almost that's enough, right? Yeah. Just, to, just to, to take that slightly artificial sense of like, you know, the amp not being in, in an environment at all. Yeah. Bass, middle and treble, drive and level. I can absolutely see the appeal of products like the Iridium over products like the MX-5 because you can't get any simpler than going, that's what I want to do with the EQ. Mm -hmm. Whereas over here, it's more a question of, well, I'll just press this bass thing and then I'll move this and you know, yeah. then I'll go, yeah, that's okay. 
Um, but fundamentally, you could still do much the same thing on each of these. So uh, let's just do what we might do perhaps with a, you know, there's my usual smiley face Fender Deluxe kind of uh, setting. So let's have a little listen here. Cool. We are, as always, with Digital John into the desk and into our studio monitors in the room. Uh, let's have a little listen um, through the head rush. Back to the... I put a little bit of reverb on from the uh, MX-5, but again, I'm going to try and just keep it like crazy low in the mix to almost try and just sort of emulate a little bit of what we're doing with the uh, with the room control here. Let me just try it now. Yeah, that's it's, it's obviously not identical, but that's that's the idea. I mean. I've got the EQ flat. There's no um, mid-range control on the uh, MX-5 because if I remember rightly on a Deluxe, there is only bass and treble. Um, and as I mentioned at the beginning, we've got it matched to a 1x12 cab. There's more bass on the MX-5. I would, whether that's mm. an unnatural amount of bass, I don't know. We can obviously reduce it slightly. I mean, it's very... Go on, keep it. <laughs> That feels a lot more like narrower mids with less highs and lows, mm. theory. But is there a feel thing? I mean, does does one? Uh, okay, so my initial feeling is like neither one of these sounds any more fendery than the other, or any more yep. natural. And so at this stage, I am questioning this whole like, what's the point? Other right. than the fact it's perhaps simpler to use. I don't know. But what what's mm. the? Okay. So here, just play and you tell me. feels like that the headbrush has a bigger bandwidth of like more highs more mm -hmm. lows in terms of feel though but like they both really do they both have a nice sweep to them mm -hmm. uh, like it's more just an eq thing it's not much feel if anything if i had to really pick this one feels more narrow in dynamic range and that's got a bit more to it but i don't know whether that's just because it's got more highs it feels you brighter. like the, you like the sound of the layla best do you like that yeah <laughs> it's always been my favorite so. yeah i mean look i'll just if i i'm not the, the the three cabs on the iridium and bear in mind on both of these you can replace all these cabs with your own ir uh, emulations if you want to uh, we're just using the preset ones in here the other cabs in the iridium are a 112 blues junior and a 210 Vibralux. Let's just hear what they sound like. Actually, so here's the um, here's the one ten. Uh, sorry, here's the, uh, the the Blues Junior sounding one. And here's the two ten Vibralux one. On the uh, on the um, uh, MX-5, uh, I can choose cabs. Although interesting, they don't have a 210 here. I've got a different 112. I've got a Tweed Deluxe 112, 
And then what I can do, which I can't do on the, well, when I say I can't do something on the Iridium, I can't do it with the preset out the box thing. I'd have to go right. into cab manager and load mm -hmm. my own cabs in. Uh, obviously on the MX-5, so I've got a lot more selection of cabs to do. Plus, of course, I can also add in my own IRs on here. Uh, I don't know, we just try it with another 112 then just to see what it sounds like, you know. <laughs> I can also, again, on the uh, MX-5, um, change the... I've got a lot more control over how I'm miking the cabinet, what mm. microphone I'm using, all that kind of stuff, which you can't do on the Strymon. All you can do on the Strymon is use a third-party product to create your own IR, do that messing around within that product, and then load it into the uh, yeah. into the Iridium. But I could, you know, again, I could choose a different mic. It doesn't actually tell me... Yeah, it doesn't tell me on the... Uh, Iridium manual, you know, what mics and stuff have been used for each of the cabs. So I'm just, you know, here's a uh, SM57. In fact, let me, let me just go back to the actual, um, the Blackface uh, 112. Ribbon mics. Right, so conclusion numero uno of taking the Iridium Fender sound and the MX-5 Fender sound and mm. messing around with some of the cab options are, uh, I'm not sure what the point of... It's way more flexible, isn't it? Having some like a head rush. Is it just literally, if you're like a, if you're just an old school pedal guy mm. and you're going, mm, I quite like to transition into this idea where maybe I don't need my guitar amplifier, but this scares the shit out of me. <laughs> is that just literally what this is for? Yeah, it might be a bit more comforting than that. Yeah. that that's a bit of a shift from pedal, you know, just pedals. Mm. But um, <clears throat> yeah, I think if you want to go full on parameters for mm. days, that is a good thing. But then that may be a bad thing. If you, you know, that parameter paralysis I mean, is a bad thing. We're, so. we're using the Iridium still just because it's the most popular one and therefore most yeah. of you will, will have this and you'll know it. I think in the most recent videos that Pete and I have done, um, we fell in love with the new uh, Universal Audio uh, versions mm. of this. So there are maybe better versions of the Iridium out there now that might perhaps make me feel a bit differently at this stage. But right now, where I am now, I'm a bit like, hmm. So yeah. round two is we're going to chime, which is uh, Voxy. And over here, we'll do the same thing. We'll just change the, uh, the amp for an AC30 top boost. Uh, so we're now on uh, the AC30 model, the chime model on the, on the uh, Iridium, still with a tiny bit of room. The first cabinet is the uh, actual AC32x12. Uh, it's the IR by Ownhammer. Uh, the second, the next two, is, there's a 112 option and there's a 412 option. There's a Mesa Boogie 412 option with an AC30 through it, right? That might mm -hmm. be cool. Yeah. Uh, and then over here, we have got um, basically the same. We've got an AC30 top boost uh, and it's running into the 212 uh, Blueback AC30, yeah. the speakers, uh, Fox speakers, sorry. So, okay, uh, we'll... EQ to taste, but at the moment we're kind of everything at 12 o'clock. Here we go. feels great that really does yeah <laughs> we're completely like what yeah. anyway look there's more gain right on the on can we just give yeah. us a strummy strum okay so let me just 
uh, if I back the volume down and then compensate by turning the master up, and we're just trying to get some sort of similarity in 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 the in the gain level. So that's maybe a bit better, right? Mm. I just feel like that, sorry, <laughs> not the name, <laughs> on, on the Strymon, when you dig in it just feels like the same sound but louder, but when you dig in on the headrush it has the character well, let's, that you get let's, out of okay, it. Okay, let's put a little bit of extra drive on, okay. on the, um, the Strymon. And, and of course select the Strymon. <laughs> That's a lot closer now. Bring the mids back on that, it might be. That's got tons of mids on it. There's like a sort of clacky top to this, which may be good in a live context, it's mid-range, but... It, I, I, I'm, I am genuinely sort of going, why hasn't someone done this video before? Maybe they have, maybe we just haven't seen mm. it. But there is this like, mm, I'm, I, I'm, I'm, I'm sort of confusing myself now, really, with regards to just, not, I know what I'm doing. I'm just, for me personally, mm. as a guitar player, if you'd have, before this video, if you'd have gone, would you like a pedal board with one of these at the end? Or would you like this? I'd be like, I'd like a pedal board with one of these at the end, please, because yeah. that's my happy place, right? And now I'm going, why? Yeah. I tell, I'm not, it's like, why, why do I just, anyway, look. Let's, Other than footprint size, like that's twice as big, but. Let, let's get, get let's go Voxy driven. Let's try and, you know, a bit Brian May, that kind of thing. Let's just see where we go here. Okay. And we'll do the same over here to just sort of, you know, I don't know where we've got to take the, the volume levels up here to sort of send it into overdrive. A bit of trial and error here. Um, Okay, so let's Strymon. It's nice. And uh, MX5. I love an Iridium, but that sounds flat compared to the hairbrush. Right. Please, if you have started watching this video and you're just doing what I always do when you watch videos and you're listening on your iPhone, go and find yourself some headphones and go back to the beginning because I, I sometimes wonder that, you know, there's another video idea like, you know, what, how much can you actually hear if you just decide to listen to one of these videos through your iPhone? Yeah. Um, okay, well, let's just try some different cabs just because, <clears throat> because. So what did I say you had on here? You had a, uh, a 112 and then a 412, so this. My gut feeling is if you just, we've got a classic 4x12 here. So now we've got the same amp in here, but going through a 412. Let's just see what that does. Okay, I, again, I'm messing around. I, I, I picked a Dyne 7, which I'm guessing is like a SM7. Yeah. Um, it's pretty easy to use this. Again, it, it, MX5 
is a bit of a favorite of Anderton's because it's touchscreen and um, it does sound really good and it is really easy to use. But there we are. Um, I, just, I don't know where to go next. I mean, I suppose let's go over to the Marshall. Um, so this is, uh, if I remember rightly, on the, uh, this is a Plexi Super Lead model. And then our three cab options are a GNR 4x12 by Ownhammer, a 212 Vintage 30 uh, by Celestian, and an 812 by uh, Cab IR. Pretty sure we haven't got an 812 in the, um, <laughs> in the MX-5. Although, again, you know, you can load your own IRs, right? So... Uh, let's find our, what did I say this was, Plexi Super Lead. So we've got a Plexi EL84 mod, a Plexiglass Variac, Plexiglass 100 watts. Is that what it says? It is Super Lead. Yeah, there we go. Boom. Um, we'll start with cab A. Again, I'm going to have to try and sort of get the relative yeah. tone and volumes and stuff. But what does the um, Strymon sound like? Mm -hmm. To a certain degree, it's almost <clears throat> like nobody uses a Marshall patch for that kind of thing, yeah, do they? No. I mean, maybe some of you do, but I'm guessing most of you are using your Marshall patches for this kind of more of a driven tone, so. See what the MX5 sounds like. <laughs> the same. <laughs> um, okay, so what? I didn't even touch anything on here. So the 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 the, the two channels were set to uh, seventy percent volume, presence, treble are at 50%, middles at 64, bases at 40%. That's just kind of how it came out the box. So I guess if I want to put everything at 50%, which is what I've done on the... Um, yeah. It does sound like there's probably going to be too much bass on the MX-5 again. Yeah. But Here we go. <laughs> Again, excuse my ignorance here. I don't know exactly what 4x12 the own hammer um, IR is based on. I'm guessing where it says GNR, it'll be mm. a, a slash owned 4x12. And I'm trying to think what speakers slash has in his 412s. No. Are they vintage 30s or greenbacks? Um, a very quick uh, Google search would suggest they're just vintage 30 speakers. So that is not the cab that the... Um, the, the MX-5 had matched the the, the, the um, Super Lead to a greenback loaded, which would have been more period correct. So if I change that now to the, we'll go back to the sort of the vintage 30 style one, and which is a little tighter sounding and just do some more comparisons. I can change the microphone, it's mic'd up with, in fact, I will. So let's just see, what does it sound like now? <laughs> a slightly flabbier gain structure maybe on the mx5 yeah i i don't think it's better or worse i think you know many people will think of old vintage marshalls as having that you know i think that's often why you'd perhaps use a tube screamer often it was mm -hmm. popular to use because it would tighten it up a little bit add a bit more gain and drive and again i can immediately sort of go 
why don't I just put a tube screamer in front of my, M you know, it's like, yeah. I don't have to buy anything else. I just go, yes, let's have a, um, the green yeah. uh, default, default one, yeah. you know, and then. Is it on yet? Hang on, uh, it is on, but it's probably a bit uh, loud. Let's just take the level down a little bit. Um, in fact, I probably don't even want the drive up that high either. But I don't know. Let's just. I'm. I'm again. I'm messing around now just to see what happens. So. It's like it's in HD or something. The headroom. I could, I, again, that, that to be fair, I probably. Um, you know, I could have messed around for a bit longer there, trying to remember how you, there you go, drag to delete. There we go. Um, we'll just whiz through the other cabs on the Strymon, and I think we're kind of done on the video. So the second cab was a 212 Vintage 30. So let's have a little play with that, and I'll, I'll load up the same cab over here as well. Oh. <laughs> even that, even that with has, one. With even only one volume, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Again, there isn't a 212V30 loaded cab as a standard no. out the MX-5. We've got a 212B30, and I'm struggling to think what a B30 might be, but anyway. And then the one we know we haven't got is there. there's an 8 by 10 on here, which yeah. uh, again, I'd have to find a, a third party IR to download. So I'm just going to do gunned, a gun right. through the through the 8 by 10 and 8 by 12, sorry. And, you know, and then I'll do the same over here. So. go back to using a 412 on this because there is no there's an 810 but i think that's probably more of an ampeg uh, base riggy thing mm -hmm. i've really got to feel like this i'm really hoping that you're going to sort of there's either got to be a feel difference yeah and like somehow or other the the the, the, the lack of all the digitalness that's going on. This is still doing digital things, but you know, there's got to be the simplicity of this somehow is is enhancing the feel. Or if it isn't, I'm almost at this like, is it all just Emperor's new clothes? Is it just another way of doing something that maybe feels just is it just about familiarity? Is it just about having something that doesn't feel as intimidating as something like this? I think part of it might be. For me, it sort of feels like when you watch YouTube on, I mean, I love an Iridium and I think there's something to be said about not having all the high end that you carve out of a live turn anyway. Like your front of house mm -hmm. engineer is gonna carve out all the fizz. But with that, it feels like it's in like, you know, 360p on YouTube. And then that's 1080. <laughs> that's what I'm trying to, that's what it feels like. Because when you go on the old, the lovely Layla. Yeah. Uh, you know, it feels like it's suddenly in HD again. Because you've got Clapton's all that top end. signature switching pedal. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you know what I mean that, that's what I mean and it feels like that with feel as well as sound 
Um, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm a bit sort of... I, the, by the way, the how does it feel at the top there has got nothing to do with anything other than yeah. the fact that, that was just the first preset on here. And so I've sort of, you yeah. know, I haven't changed the name. I've just edited it. But it feels great. And again, you know, what we haven't even gone into on the MX... Um, on the MX-5, the fact that you can have dual amp rigs, so I could literally have the same amp running either side of a signal path, one through one cab, one through something else. I could have two different amps either side. Um, I'm not even sure where I'm going with this because this the, 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 this was not supposed to be, yeah, 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 you should all buy one of these instead of one of these kind of videos. It was more just like, what if, I, I yeah. wonder. Yeah. I, wa I wonder why are we all buying these, you know, and, and we are, you know, this is, this type of product is probably as popular as this type of product, so. Mm. I mean, people are still gonna buy them. I, I still think there's a place for this and even the TC Impulse, because they sort of fill similar ends of the pedal board thing. Mm. If you don't want a full multi-effects unit at the end. <laughs> Bless you. <laughs> and like the footprint, you know, if someone's got that sized gap on their pedal board, that's yeah. like a whole almost tier of your pedal board taken up. You just wouldn't have a pedal board though, would you? Well, exactly. That's just it. So it's what, you, um, what you set, your setup is, I guess. Well, <clears throat> I am interested in what you guys think. As always, uh, we are here to serve like the Queen. So if you have got some ideas uh, for these types of comparisons, please uh, comment away. In fact, as we were saying in the video before this, if you subscribe to this channel, and please do, because you could win the uh, Clon Centaur up there, um, what we're doing more often now is going out to our subscribers and asking them to vote on comparisons like this or shootouts across all the, you know, guitars, acoustics, um, pedals, amps, whatever. Mm. And so, yeah, but you only get to be involved with that if you're a subscriber. Um, hey! Mm. Hey! Hey, I'll be selling all my stuff and just buying a Headrush <laughs> MX-5 <laughs> by the sounds of things. Except, of course, I probably won't. Anyway, yeah. that's it. I'm the captain. He's Digital John. And we'll see you next see you time. Later.